In the winter of 1928, an inventor in Pennsylvania claimed to have done the impossible. His name was Lester J. Hendershot, sometimes written Lester Jennings Hendershot. He worked in a small workshop surrounded by coils, magnets, and copper wires. He said he had built a machine that could draw power directly from the Earth's magnetic field. Newspapers called it a fuelless generator, a device that could change the world forever. For a moment, it seemed like humanity had found the key to infinite energy. Hendershot was not a formally trained scientist, but a self-taught engineer fascinated by radio circuits and aviation. He claimed that his breakthrough came while he was studying magnetic compasses used in aircraft. He noticed odd interactions between coils and magnets when they were placed in certain positions relative to the Earth's field. From that observation, he began building a new kind of generator one that required no gasoline, no moving parts, or minimal moving parts, and no external source of power. In his own words, it was a magnetic resonance converter, an energy machine that simply harvested what was already around us. The prototype he showed in early demonstrations was small, a compact wooden and metal frame wound with coils and capacitors, but witnesses reported that it powered small motors and light bulbs effortlessly. To those observers, the effect was thrilling, and also a little frightening. Electricity flowed from a device that appeared to consume nothing. Newspapers soon carried stories about the invention that could make engines obsolete. At the time, America was caught between awe and skepticism. The late 1920s were years of wild innovation. Aviation, radio, and electrical marvels seemed to appear every month. But even then, a machine that created energy from nowhere violated the foundation of physics. Yet Hendershot spoke with a conviction. He insisted he was not breaking any laws of nature. He said he was simply using forces that science did not yet fully understand. According to later published accounts in small magazines, the famous aviator Charles Lindbergh reportedly took interest in Hendershot's device. Some stories suggest Lindbergh saw a demonstration and even tested the motor that Hendershot had connected to it. Whether this is fact or myth remains uncertain, but it added immense allure to the legend. Suddenly, the Hendershot generator was being whispered about in hangars and scientific clubs as an invention that could revolutionize aviation. Hendershot dreamed that his generator could one day power airplanes indefinitely, making refueling unnecessary. He imagined a world where homes and entire cities could draw power directly from the planet, silently and endlessly. But shortly after these early demonstrations, the tone of his story changed. What had begun as triumph quickly turned into suspicion, secrecy, and tragedy. The military reportedly took interest in his designs, and men claiming to represent powerful investors began visiting him. Some offered funding, others offered veiled warnings. Within months, Hendershot withdrew from public demonstrations, saying he needed time to perfect the design. By the early 1930s, rumors spread that his lab had been searched and his notes confiscated. Skeptics argued his invention was an illusion built on hidden batteries or clever electromagnetic induction. But others who claimed to have replicated his circuits insisted that there was something real behind it a delicate resonance between tuned coils and the geomagnetic field which could generate low but continuous power. The controversy deepened with each retelling. What was certain, however, was that Hendershot's generator disappeared as suddenly as it had appeared. For decades afterward, scattered enthusiasts tried to rebuild it using diagrams allegedly copied from Hendershot's notebooks. Most failed, producing nothing but faint sparks. A few claimed success, but offered no solid proof. The Hendershot generator became one of the great ghosts of scientific history, an invention which lived only in rumor and in the memory of a few aging witnesses. In the 1950s, Hendershot resurfaced briefly, once again claiming to have perfected his generator. This time, the world was different. The nuclear power age had dawned, and the dream of free, limitless energy was again in the air. He began building prototypes, hoping finally to bring his vision to the public. He demonstrated a model which supposedly produced 50 to 100 watts of power, enough to light several bulbs, without any fuel or input current. 
A few engineers who saw it admitted it behaved strangely, but could not explain the mechanism. The press picked up the story once more, and suddenly the quiet inventor was again a man surrounded by curiosity and controversy. But fame was not kind to him. By this time, Hendershot had become a nervous, paranoid figure, often speaking about people who wanted to suppress his work. He told friends certain agencies were watching him. He said they did not want a machine that could make energy companies irrelevant. Whether those fears were justified or the product of exhaustion and obsession remains debated. What happened next turned his story from mystery into tragedy. In February 1961, Lester J. Hendershot was found dead in his workshop in New Stanton, Pennsylvania. The official report stated that he had hanged himself with an electrical cord. The death was a suicide and the case was closed. But to those who knew him, the explanation never felt complete. He had been working on yet another prototype in the weeks before his death, reportedly excited about a discovery. Some said he had just secured a potential deal to mass produce his generator. Others claimed he was planning a demonstration for the press. None of those plans aligned with the image of a man preparing to end his life. Rumors circulated that his workshop had been searched before investigators arrived. Some claimed his papers and coils were missing. His notebook was gone. Neighbors recalled strange visitors in unmarked cars days before his death. Whether these are distortions of memory or fragments of truth remains uncertain, but they form the foundation of the mysterious death legend that still surrounds him today. The absence of a thorough investigation led many, including his family, to suspect foul play, theorizing that his innovative work posed a threat to large energy corporations. Rumors circulated that a major corporation, which he declined to name, had warned Hendershot to cease all work related to his generator, underlining the disruption his invention could cause to their lucrative business. Allegedly, Hendershot accepted $25,000 under the condition that he halt his research for two decades. He had expressed fears for his safety to his family, indicating how serious the threats he believed he faced really were. Hendershot's death and the disappearance of his invention continue to provoke deep questions. Skeptics argue that Hendershot's death was a tragic suicide driven by frustration, financial hardship, and the ridicule of mainstream science. They point out that despite decades of claims, no working model ever surfaced that could be independently tested and verified. Engineers who studied his surviving diagrams described them as incomplete and inconsistent. The scientific verdict, as they see it, is clear. There was no such thing as a free energy generator. Yet even within that skepticism, questions linger. Why did credible witnesses report seeing the machine work? Why did military representatives and corporate engineers travel to meet him if his device was a hoax? And why, after his death, were his prototypes and notes never recovered? The absence of answers fuels the enduring myth of suppression. Those who believe in his discovery argue that Hendershot stumbled upon an unknown electromagnetic resonance, something akin to what later inventors would call zero-point energy. They claim he discovered how to tap into the constant flow of magnetic energy produced by the Earth, converting it into electrical power without violating conservation laws. In that sense, his machine was not creating energy, it was harvesting it, but without his original working model, this remains speculation. The surviving schematics are simple, but perplexing. They show two large coils wound in opposite directions, connected to capacitors, transformers, and a permanent magnet. The entire system forms a resonant feedback loop where oscillations supposedly amplify themselves through magnetic coupling. Some modern experimenters believe that under exact tuning, such a circuit could generate small currents from ambient electromagnetic noise, but nowhere near the level of output Hendershot described. And yet, over a century later, people still attempt to rebuild it. On obscure forums and research websites, enthusiasts exchange blueprints, discuss coil turns and resonance frequencies, and speak of the lost key to overunity. To them, Hendershot is not a fraud, but a pioneer silenced before his time. They argue that what killed him was not despair, but suppression. 
In that narrative, Hendershot's death mirrors that of other controversial inventors. Men who claimed to have tapped forbidden energies only to die abruptly before revealing their secrets. Some link him to names like Nikola Tesla and Thomas Henry Moray, inventors whose devices allegedly defied mainstream explanation. Real or imagined, his story carries the gravity of a lost revolution. In one of his last notes, he reportedly wrote that energy is everywhere if you know how to look. Today, the so-called Hendershot generator survives in digital blueprints circulating across the internet, reinterpreted by enthusiasts using modern components. They keep Geeky experimenting, hoping to rediscover what he may have known. Did Lester J. Hendershot truly find a way to draw power from the Earth's magnetic field, or was he simply another dreamer lost in his own invention? The answer lies buried somewhere between science and myth, between genius and tragedy. His machine may have been nothing more than an elaborate resonance circuit, or it may have been something far more profound. What cannot be denied is that the mystery of his death keeps the legend alive.